is this prime Dustin Poirier we're getting right now? You know, obviously it's you know it's probably as good as we've seen him, but is is this the ceiling now? And believe me, the ceiling's high. You know, I think most people would agree, even though. Uh, Charles Oliveira's got a belt right now. I think most most people still rank Dustin Poirier as the best 155 pounder on the planet. Is this as good as we get? Is this a guy at the peak of his powers? I think he's the number one guy. I think yeah, I think he's in his absolute absolute physical prime, mental prime. This is as good as it gets, or I mean, or as good as he's ever been, I should say, because there's always room to grow. But he, oh, he's a monster, man. He's, he. he his belief, his his experience. He's been in there so many big fights, main events, title fights, world champions, many times over fought all the all these all these tough guys. And then this guy, he takes all this knowledge that, that he's acquired and uh, then puts it with this physical gifts that he has, unbelievable punching power, both hands, left hand, right hand kicks hard as hell with both legs left, right, and it doesn't go away. First minute, 25 minutes, he can knock you out with one shot, either leg, either hand, always dangerous. Um, I think I always say he, no, nobody puts out more wattage, no more no, no more firepower over 15 minutes, 25 minutes. This guy puts out so much power, so much wattage over this period of time. It's very hard to keep up with him. As a as a coach and someone that's been around Dustin for an awful long time, you know, obviously I think most fans who have followed the sport for, for any period of time I remember Dustin, you know, as a bright eyed and bushy tailed from the Fightland documentary, and then obviously as a featherweight before he moved up to, to to lightweight. At one point in time, either as his coach or as a as a teammate, did you see something in him like where you thought, wow, this guy, this guy could be the best in the world? Always. I always knew that he that he had that. He always was had the gifts that were that you need those most important gifts you know uh mental very strong mind strong will um power conditioning he's got the physical gifts and he's got the desire so and he's in the right place you know he's he's with great coaches and um great training partners great you know he has all the tools he needs I think when you got a guy like that, there's there's no reason uh, he won't be the best in the world or world champion, except for maybe bad luck. You know, sometimes the sport's crazy and you never know what's going to happen. Injuries, the best fighter doesn't always win. Um, but I I knew he would be the best guy in the world. Was it a team conversation or was it purely down to Dustin himself? Who made the decision? Because, you know, again, it's hard to disagree with you that he's not the best guy in the world. But in fact, there's a guy walking around Brazil at the moment with the UFC belt wrapped around his waist with real claims to being the best lightweight on the planet. So obviously, it was Dustin uh, or Team Dustin that made the decision instead of fighting for the vacant belt against either Charles or, or Michael Chandler that the decision was made to go straight into the trilogy fight with Connor. Now, Financials aside, of course, you know, I think we all, we all, you know, you'd have to be daft not to see the financial rewards compared to the the other the title fight. But of course, there's a huge risk involved as well because if you don't beat Connor, then chances are, you know, you're you're two fights away from a title fight now, rather than being able to walk straight into one and potentially your legacy ends without ever winning the title when you were at one point the best guy in the world. Was that a team conversation or was that purely a Dustin decision? I mean, yeah, it's it's risky, but I think uh, he obviously talked to everybody and got everybody's opinion. But I think it comes down to Dustin, his wife, his manager, Rob Rivetta. They're the ones that make the final decision. But um, he took everybody's, you know, opinion and and I think and uh, to his decision. But uh, at the end of the day, it's it's him and his family's decision and. Uh, I think I obviously think he made the right one. You would have, if it was yourself in those shoes, might you'd have done the same thing? A thousand percent. I guess it, 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 there's, there's double edged sword to it, really. Obviously, you're, you're riding the crest of a wave of just beating Connor. Uh, you're not giving Connor the chance to go and kind of, you know, get a better feel and get back into the groove or whatever it may be. But also, I, I guess. Charles Oliveira is going to be ringside on cage side on Saturday night, I'm guessing, waiting for the winner anyway. Yeah, another another huge fight after this one awaits. 
Uh, I mean, they're all, they're all, every fight in front of you is the biggest fight of your life. They're all super dangerous. They all go on your permanent record. This is just going to have more viewers probably than any fight that we've ever seen. This is going to yeah. be the big, I, I believe it'll be the biggest pay-per-view ever sold. To, you know, the most charismatic um, double, double UFC champ, double weight class UFC champ against the, probably the most exciting guy in the organization, uh, the best lightweight in the world. Uh, both have a KO o- over each other. This doesn't get any bigger. I think it'll be the biggest <laughs> we've ever seen. Oh, wow. Right. Just clip, clip that either side. There's our no, promo right at. there. It's that's as big as it gets. That's where yeah. we're at. This is time. Let's go. Let's see it. You know, you're not missing this. 